Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast. I am Jenny Bellinger, your direct sales dom. Uh, today, I have a really fun guest who I've been kind of following her for, uh, I'd say, probably five or six years now, just kind of in the background following her because she is a big name in the direct sales world. If you've been in direct sales for any amount of time, you've probably heard the name Jackie Ulmer. We all know and love her. And if you haven't heard of her, I'm sorry that you've been hiding under a rock, <laughs> but you should know Jackie. Jackie and I connected because we're actually both members of BNI, which I thought was so cool. So for those of you who don't know who Jackie is, I'm going to let you guys know who she is. She's an award-winning speaker, coach, and entrepreneur. She is focused on helping women develop the business skills, confidence, and the thing we're all wanting to know right now, social media strategies that are needed to attract their ideal clients using online and offline methods. She has been an entrepreneur for 25 years or more, and she sold products, services, and has built teams in over 40 countries in direct sales and coaching. We don't get our goals, we get our habits, is what Jackie says. She's going to coach you on how to develop the habits you need to rock your business. Welcome to the show, Jackie. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate it. I'm thrilled to be here. Awesome. So tell us, so you have a history in, in direct sales. Tell us how you got into direct sales. I do. I have a 26-year history and going. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm one of those people, maybe like many of your listeners, who kind of fell into it kicking and screaming. <laughs> I had a really fun career in the airline industry. I was in sales and marketing. And I like to say I party for a living, which is perfect for direct sales, especially the party plan gals. Yeah, I always say I partied for a living. I literally flew around the world on first class on, with an expense account, and I wined and dined corporate travelers and travel agents to fly on our airline. I had one cardinal rule, and that was don't date pilots. And I dated one, and I married him. And now 31 years later, we're still married. <laughs> and that's been a great decision. But when we decided to start a family, somebody needed to be at home, and that was obviously going to be me. But I just have had an entrepreneurial mind my whole life. I started selling mistletoe door to door when I was about 12 years old in Durango, Colorado, where I'm from. And I just am fascinated by money and marketing and business and all the different things that we can do. And I'm one of those people, I'm kind of a multi-passionate preneur in that I have a lot of different interests. So once I stayed home with my kids, I still, or my son, I still really had a passion about doing something. And at that point, the internet didn't exist. So I was going to the library looking at books, things I could do. I started a little word processing business and I only could take that so far with an infant and an airline pilot husband and that whole thing. And then I kind of stumbled upon network marketing and I kept thinking, oh gosh, you know, that's one of those things that you do when you don't get a, can't get a real job. You know, um, I just was really negative, but my husband kept encouraging me to, you know, learn more, explore it. He had a friend, another pilot friend who was involved with a company and that kind of lent itself to credibility. You know, we talk about credibility and those different things, that warm market feel of, of people who, who can ship those, those views for us. So I did, I started doing research and I kind of liked what I saw in terms of the ability to truly break through glass ceilings, especially as a female and be able to control my schedule, earn more than just a hobby income because I wasn't looking for a hobby income and, you know, do great things. So I jumped in with both feet and I'd love to tell you that I had a huge success story right out of the gate, but that would not be exactly the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I stumbled like so many and my biggest obstacle really was my mindset. I had to get over my fear of, oh, what's everybody going to think? And I don't know what I'm doing. And Everybody's going to think this is something you do when you can't get a real job, those different things. Mm -hmm. But I, did, I managed to get out of my way and started building. And here I am today. 
That's awesome. And so as you were going through your direct sales journey, so you had a, you had the initial obstacle of your mindset, what was your next biggest obstacle that you dealt with and overcame in your direct sales business? Probably the biggest challenge was like many people, I, I did go through my warm market and I was never one personally to go too far into that way extended warm market. If it wasn't somebody that I really had a relationship with, I wasn't, and this was before Facebook or we got reconnected to all those high school friends and that type thing. I I just didn't feel comfortable going way too far. And so my biggest obstacle ultimately became who am I going to talk to? And I did so many things that others do. This was back in the nineties when I first started, I mall walked and talked to people. I put, business cards on windshields. I ran ads. I just, you know, went to chamber of commerce meetings, joined networking groups like BNI, that type thing, which those were the best fit for me. But there were so many things about it. I didn't enjoy doing. I didn't like putting cards on windshields. I felt like I was littering. I didn't like cold calling. I had bought lead lists. I had done a lot of different things and I didn't like those things. And I finally realized that I needed to come up with something I did like. Otherwise I was going to be out of business very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's probably a a really big obstacle for a lot of people in direct sales is trying to find how do we get outside our circle? Because a lot of us, I mean, I know for me, when I got started with my direct sales business, I was in business for about four months before I realized, okay, I have now had a party with everyone I know who said they would have a party with me. I'm not going back to that well. So now what? Right. So how do you meet the new clients? It's it's how do you how do you get out there and meet new people? So you you already brought up some of some of the great options that are out there, going out and networking, going out, whether it's through Chamber, through BNI, through other networking organizations that have become very popular now. BNI isn't the only one out there anymore, but we certainly we know it works for us, so we like it. But there are a lot of different options to to meet new people. And all businesses have that issue, not just direct sales, right? You know, every business needs to be bringing in new clients in order to do that. So how did you transition then from the direct sales, warm, you know, person-to-person market into what I now know is your your large online business? How did you make that shift? Yeah, it's a fun story. It really is. And I still feel like I wake up every day and kind of pinch myself and go, wow, this is amazing. And and I had I had heard, this was one of the best quotes I ever heard, is that no matter what business you're in, you can't build it on the backs of family and friends specifically. And I don't even mean that in a harsh way, like taking advantage of them, but it is true. I don't care if you're in real estate. I don't care if you sell insurance. It doesn't matter. Your family and friends can only take you so far period in any business. So I knew I had to break out of that. And I I was tired of running around too. I had small children and my whole goal was to be home. So I didn't want to constantly be getting babysitters. And it was October of 1999. And my company was one of the very first companies to launch personal websites for its distributor base. And I had been hearing about the internet, .com this and .com that, and it was showing up on billboards those were still a thing, um, you know, showing up in on advertising and magazines. And my husband, we had gotten the internet so that he could download his pilot bids, could never figure out how to do it back in the day. But I would get out there and, you know, surf out on Yahoo because Google was just getting started. And there was an ad in the newspaper for an internet marketing seminar that was going on on a Saturday in October. And I went to the seminar thinking, well, I might be able to prospect some people, right? I'll talk to some new people and I'll learn a little bit about this internet thing and this website I'm getting that I don't have a clue what to do with. And I walked into that meeting. It was a two hour seminar and they were trying to sell me space on an internet mall. And I didn't even understand what that was. And it, it was kind of, it was a big sales pitch and most of it was a waste of time. But what really got me was the guy on stage was spouting off, you know, stats and statistics and just all these numbers of the growth of the internet, how it was doubling and tripling. And it was the greatest tool in our lifetime. And, you know, he was showing how you could find the menu of a restaurant in Buffalo and you could, you know, find out the operating hours of Disneyland. And I kept thinking, well, if people are going to the internet to find that, 
there've got to be people who are going to the internet to find a solution financially. The company that I was with at that time is no longer in business, but it was a telecommunications company. So I was raised in network marketing, if you will. I was brought up to always be focused on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I was always looking for business partners and then I would default to the customer side. So I was very focused on that people were out there looking for an option for making money and an option for making money at home and that type of thing. So I went home on a Saturday afternoon and I told my husband, I'll be back. I'm going to the library. And I went to the library. It was closing in about 30 minutes and I checked out every single book I could find on internet, anything. And I didn't even know what I was getting. I just, I came home with about 10 books and I plopped them on the dining room table. And I said, I'm taking our business to the internet. And he looked at me like I had horns growing out of my head which I probably did. <laughs> um, and I just got busy and that's what I did. And it was October of 99. My biggest fear is that Y2K was going to wipe out everything that I had done on a website. Cause many of you will remember it was supposed to shut down the whole world. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest fear, but I kept persevering. I figured out what to do and I built a website. And within six months I had done more than I had done in six years and I knew I was onto something. I knew that I had found my pot of gold. Nice. And so obviously since 1999, the internet has completely changed. It's really taken over. And for those of you who are listening to this episode, depending on when you're listening, you know, Jackie and I are recording this during the whole self-quarantine thing of uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 stuff going on. And so obviously online businesses is, is kind of the way to be right now, because right now there are so many businesses that are completely completely brick and mortars that are shut down because you're not allowed or not preferred to be out of your home, you know, for the, for the protection of everybody health wise. So the online business structure has obviously changed in 20 years. So what do you see are the current trends and especially for people who are in direct sales, how can they begin to take a look at, you know, the way they were doing business six months ago when things were fine versus, okay, moving forward, how do I transition or ha have a part of my business that's online? Yeah, great question. It's kind of funny. When I first went to my sponsor and told him what I was going to do, he told me I was crazy, that I would lose my entire business to get that idea out of my head. It was a belly to belly business and there was absolutely no way you could build a network marketing business online. Well, that just made me more determined than anything. Tell me I can't do something and I'm going to figure out a way. And it was kind of funny because right when this whole coronavirus thing started, I actually put a, put a graphic and a post out on my Facebook profile and said, what if real life went away? Because it kind of did. You know what I mean? Real life in terms of like being out there doing the things that we do. And I feel fortunate because my business is still growing and thriving and, and because I've had those tools in place for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's all been growing for a long time. And I, I think the biggest key, well, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they are ready to take their business online or think about, I've started a business, I'm going to go let everybody on Facebook know, is that they begin to look at social media as an advertising platform versus a networking platform, a social media platform. It's kind of like what we experience at BNI, Jenny. You know, we, we, we go to BNI and we don't stand up there and say, buy my stuff. We market ourselves. We share what we do. We share who we're looking to serve. We share in what ways we're going to serve them. We're constantly dripping on them about what it is that we offer, but we're doing it in a way that provides value. And I don't know why, but I just knew that. Maybe it's because I've been networking for so many years. I grew up working for the Chamber of Commerce in Durango, Colorado. So I just already kind of knew networking skills. And I knew when I took my business online, that's exactly the same way that it was going to go. I, I, was, I was there to meet people, to expand my network, to learn about them, and to share with them what I do. So, you know, I always say the three key things that we do. We meet people, we share with them what we do, and then we ultimately make an offer. And making an offer isn't necessarily making an offer to buy my product or join my team or any of that. It's how can I network with you? How can I support you a lot of times too? Certainly there are those times when making that offer to buy what you offer is going to be legitimate because you've taken them into that conversation. But it's really beginning to build that strategy around how do I market myself out on social media in a way that gains the interest of my audience, 
builds my brand and my presence and is constantly delivering my messaging and value, but in a way that I'm like a well-rounded person so that it's not all business, 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 business. I always say nobody shows up to Facebook with their credit card out saying, what am I going to buy today off of Facebook? <laughs> right. And yet we know people buy off of Facebook and social media all the time. Mm -hmm. It just has to be their idea and they don't show up that way ready to go. Yeah, exactly. It's it's the conversation of, you know, nobody likes to be sold, but everybody likes to buy. So how exactly. do you how do you, you know, transition for people the type of posts, for example, on Facebook that get people the idea that they want to buy from you. So maneuvering themselves through that business aspect, um, definitely going through and, and taking care of that to make sure that you are as you said, position properly so that when they're ready to buy, they go to you. So that's awesome. So how do you support clients coming from the, the direct sales world or from traditional business world? How, what do you do with your different offerings for everybody? So I am basically a, a, a coach for solopreneurs and I call that anyone with a business in a box. And that includes network marketers, direct sales, party plan, real estate agents, life coaches, anybody who has a business, a concept, they know what they sell, they know their program and their offering, but they don't have leads coming in. They're totally 100% on their own to build their database, generate leads open the communication, share what they do, make the offer, close the sale, ask for the sale. Ooh, that's always scary. <laughs> you know, all of that, that, and then, and then ask for referrals, do the follow-up, all of those pieces. So that's really what I coach and train on. I, I call it the four pillars really and truly to building that type of business. It's your messaging and success language. So it's learning how to introduce yourself to people and introduce what you do instead of saying, Oh, I work, I, I work with XYZ company, or I'm a real estate agent, or I have a party plan business or something that really says nothing. It's learning how to create that success language and that positioning so that your ideal client captures what you hear. They, they catch it. They become interested. They lean in. And then once you've kind of identified that, we, we work on identifying who's your ideal client. That was the beauty. The two things that really struck me when I decided to take my business online, I realized that A, I could leverage myself like nothing else. So you and I are doing this right now. We're having this time together. We'll spend, you know, 30 minutes to an hour and we've leveraged ourselves because over the course of time through the podcast, through video, through everything in the way that this gets out there, nobody right now is hearing this as we're recording it. But over the course of time, tens of thousands of people can hear that. Mm -hmm. And yet we only invested that one hour or whatever it is to get that done. Right. Whereas if we do a one-to-one, -one, which you and I did, for BNI, that time is is lost then. It's it's gone forever for anybody else to ever be a part of that. So I realized I could take the same thing that I was doing, whether it was kind of a party environment or shooting a quick how-to video, how to generate leads, how to how to talk to people. I could create a whole series of that and leverage myself out there because I could be sleeping, I could be at the park with my kids doing whatever, and people could still be consuming my content, becoming aware of me, kind of like what you shared, having followed me for five or six years. Obviously, it was through a piece of content that I put out there sometime right. that you found. And I saw the value in that. So I saw that as number one. But I also love the way the internet is is all about pockets. It's, it's pockets where people gather, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram, where they're dialed into their areas of interest. So you and I can walk into the BNI or Chamber of Commerce meeting, and that's great. But only a small percentage of those people will be our, our ideal client. Mm. Now, if they're good networkers, they'll refer us, they'll learn more about our business and see where they can refer us. But on the internet, you can find and put yourself out there where your ideal client is. And they're going to see your content and they're going to consume that and become interested. And you don't have to worry so much about everybody else. So that's where your messaging becomes so important so that you learn how to talk exactly to that ideal client and you identify who that ideal client is. And then we create a whole marketing strategy around that online and offline so that as you lay out your plan, so we do the messaging and the ideal client piece, then we work on the marketing online and offline 
And then we go into time management and productivity because so many people get up every day, especially direct sales people. I know I should be doing something in my business, but I don't have any idea what, what should I be doing in my business? Mm -hmm. So we build that calendar so that, you know, every day, the who, what, when, how, and why of your business, of the marketing piece of it, you know where each person is every step of the way to get all that done and you truly create a lifestyle business. That was the thing that I wanted more than anything. I didn't want to be running all over town all the time. I didn't want to be, you know, spending 60 hours a week working my business. I wanted to create that lifestyle business to where I had leads coming into me. They knew what it was. They knew who I was. When I called them, texted them, got on a Zoom call with them, they already knew who they were going to be talking to. And I had already yeah. warmed them up through the content process. And then we work a lot on mindset because of course, that's one of the things that stumps us, especially women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have confidence issues. We have comparanoia issues with social media. We scroll Instagram. We compare our B-roll to everybody else's A-roll. And we look at everybody else's filtered perfect life and compare ourselves and think, gosh, who am I? Like, who's going to listen to what I have to say? So those are basically the four pillars that we focus on. I think that's phenomenal because, yeah, it, it really hits all the different areas that you know, people are trying to figure out how to run their own business because, you know, yeah, it, we get sold a business in a box in direct sales, right? That, and I right. put air quotes around that for those of you listening. We get sold a business in a box, believing that this is everything we need in order to run a business. And, and really what's in the box is, is just the product and the catalog and the, the nuts and the bolts of it without any of the finesse that we know great entrepreneurs have. But, you know, again, you, the comparanoia, right? Many of us are comparing, you know, our chapter two of our business to somebody's chapter 47. Exactly. <laughs> you know, somebody who's been doing it for a while, someone who, who has had time to have all those stumbling blocks and they already made the mistakes that you're currently making. And, and so it's, it's a whole different thing to compare yourself. So it, it's not always fair for sure. Absolutely. So Jackie, I know before we got on to start the, the episode, we had talked a little bit that you've got a gift for the listeners right now. So uh, tell us a little bit about your gift for the, the listener. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have a, a little, it's an MP3. It's a recorded audio with a worksheet that goes along with it. It's Unleash the Power of Social Selling. And it really walks you through the overall basic strategy behind putting together an internet selling program, if you will. And I, I really do love to focus on the word sales because and again, especially as women, so often we shy away from that. It's one of the biggest objections. Oh, I don't want to sell people. I don't want to sell my family and friends. And yet, just like you said, Jenny, people love to buy. We all love to buy when it's the right environment. So I really walk you through putting together that overall strategy of, of what your messaging is going to be and how to really begin to get yourself out there in a way that's not salesy, that's not hypey, that begins to build your brand and your audience so that that audience becomes eager to hear the offer that you have to make when you're ready to make that. Oh, wow. That is so cool. Thank you so much for offering that to everybody. Guys, you definitely want to get in on this. So how, how can they access this audio and worksheet? Yeah. So you can just go to street smart wealth dot me that street just like you live on smart because you are smart and wealth just like money street smart wealth dot me and that'll take you right into it very cool and guys go ahead and check the show notes as well there's a direct link where you can go ahead and click and go straight to street smart wealth dot me and that's m e in order to access that mp3 and the worksheet that jackie has for you so Jackie, this has been so much fun. Thank you for sharing this awesome information and the, the experience that you've had. Before we go, we can't forget the most important question of Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast, which is, what is your secret to success? My secret to success are my three C's, and that is clarity, commitment, and consistency. Everything that we do in this business is a learned skill set. We have a tendency to want to think that somebody else has some secret sauce that we don't have, but it really is just a learned set of business skills. And when you have clarity around your why and your who and your what and your how, 
it leads you to the commitment. And, and part of the commitment is, is finding and, and committing to that process of developing that skill set and then it's consistency. Success is sexy. The road to get there, not always so much. It's a lot of rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. The cool thing is we're always doing that with new people and people are fascinating. They're the lifeblood of our business. And so that's really a lot of fun. So keep those three C's in mind and especially the consistency piece that will take you head and shoulders above everybody else. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that because, you know, as, I, as I'm getting to write the first chapter of my book, I'm finding that those three C's have really served me. <laughs> For sure. So thank you so much, Jackie, for being on the show today. We really appreciate having you here. And please, I would love to have you back at some point in the future, because I'm sure you have, with all the experience you've got, you've got another great bit of information. And as you come out with any new programs, please feel free to, to reach out. Let's, let's get, you, get you in front of people who need what you have. I would love that. And I look forward to having you on my podcast as well. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Well, everybody, this has been another amazing episode of the Badass Rex Sales Mastery Podcast. And just stay tuned for the next kick-ass episode. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to badassdirectsalesmastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.